Okay, so where we're going to talk about the vertebral column, specifically comparing and contrasting uh, the regions, numbers, and the types of vertebrae, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, of the vertebrae within the vertebral column. And we'll also contrast the curvatures in each of these regions. So the vertebral column is comprised of the following vertebrae, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal. And often we break down and just use the first letter of each of those words because we're lazy. And so for the cervical vertebrae, uh, we find there's, uh, they're in the neck, hence what cervix means. And to, to find those cervical vertebrae, uh, we look for the following, the base of the skull, the occipital bone, and the first rib, and the seven cervical vertebrae are between those two landmarks, base of the skull and rib one where the first th thoracic vertebra is located. So C1 is the first vertebra, then there's C2, then there's C3, and then all the way down to C7. And we just use the first letter to represent each vertebra. Seven cervical vertebrae. Now, the thoracic vertebrae, they're located in the thoracic region. Um, we can find those quite easily because there are 12 pairs of ribs that come off, or a pair of ribs that come off of each of these vertebrae. So we find rib one, we find rib 12, and there's the first and last thoracic vertebrae, and there's 12 of them. And they're numbered sequentially, T1, T2, T3, T4, T12, and of course, the ones in between. Then the lumbar vertebrae are located in the lower back, and these are found by finding that first rib, and then it's the first vertebra below that, and then all the way down to the last um, articulating rib because then the sacrum is fused below that. So to find these five lumbar vertebrae, you just go with the, rib, the vertebra below the first rib, and there's L1, L2, L3, L4, and then there's the L5 vertebra. Um, the sacrum is composed of five fused vertebrae, but even though they're fused, we still see a segmental organization for the S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5 sacral levels. And this is significant because they still have nerves that, the spinal nerves that exit below their um, associated uh, intervertebral frame and the dorsal sacral foramen in these cases that we're seeing, but uh, neural foramen nonetheless. And then finally, the three to four fused vertebrae that make up your tailbone, the coccygeal vertebrae. So there we have our vertebral column and each of the regions. Um, the vertebral column consists of some curvatures, so that we call them primary curvatures and secondary curvatures. The first is our primary curvature, so there we have a picture of a fetus, and notice that the fetus is in the fetal position, hence the name. And the vertebrae makes this um, primary curve, this C-shaped curve, and it's primary because it's the first curve that we have in the vertebral column. And so that curve is retained in the thoracic region of our vertebral column. And so we call that curve in the thoracic vertebrae the primary curvature. But in adult, primary curvature, but in adult, what we see is that in the cervical and lumbar regions, we have these secondary curves because they come after that primary curve in the cervical and lumbar region where you hold up your head and when you, you know when you learn to hold your head up and learn to walk and stand uh, when these secondary curves have evolved and um, these are also called lordotic curves because uh, or they're just called lordotic curvatures and in the lumbar region if you have an over curvature in this area they often call it lordosis so there we have this normal vertical alignment that we should see in those spinous processes. And as a result, the ribs come off in a very um, consistent, parallel manner. And so when a patient touches their knees, we should see that the ribs allow the shoulder blades to be parallel to each other. However, in the case of scoliosis, when there's an, uh, an S-shaped curve or a misalignment in this vertebral column, that arrow is showing this S-shaped curve usually going towards the right, which causes the ribs to elevate such when the patient touches his or her knees, the scapula on that affected side will rise up higher than the other. And here we have the basics of the vertebral column.